Why hello my friends, my name is Sir James Insane and welcome back to my channel. Now E3 is pretty much over now. It's about two weeks out and so is this video. I'm sorry I'm so late. I've been busy and when I'm not busy I'm procrastinating. You can't imagine how many times I've actually had like the time to make this video. And then I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that in a little while. And guess what? It never happened. But nonetheless, here I am. The hiatus is over. Now, of course, I'm going to start off with the big one. Or should I say, the big one X. The Xbox One X, originally known as Project Scorpio, is Microsoft's new and definitely improved version of the Xbox One. On screen are the specs if you don't know them. Now the specs are amazing. This console is a beast. It, it's, it's super powerful. It's the strongest console ever created. Yet, you know? And the look of it is smooth. It's simple. Very Xbox One-esque. For a good reason. But again, the specs are what make this machine such a beast. And I can't wait to pick one up when it actually launches and see just how good this console is. But more importantly, with the announcement of the Xbox One X and the previous Xbox One S, along with the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro, I see what looks like an ongoing scenarios of consoles finally, or maybe, breaching the gap between consoles and PC. In a video made by one of my favorite YouTubers, Boogie2988, he brought up this amazing concept of Instead of continuing creating newer consoles to once again force players to go out and purchase them to be able to play new and upcoming games, the idea of, in a sense, upgrading your console is something that I think would benefit everyone. Gamers of all sizes and stuff. The constant release of newer and more powerful variations of both the PS4 and Xbox One benefit gamers who aren't fortunate enough to get the newer consoles who if this concept is correct and this is what these companies are going for would still be able to enjoy the games that hit that his or her friend is playing on let's say a PS4 Pro while they themselves are playing on a first gen PlayStation 4 for example only with a difference in overall performance and visuals and I really think that keeping this ongoing motif can be a real game changer pun intended and could abolish the console stigma that has been plaguing the gaming community for years. Or, you know, maybe I'm wrong and, you know, if I am, just ignore everything I just said. Assassin's Creed Origins Assassin's Creed Origins is said to tell the origins of the Assassins, something that we never really knew. Uh, this is the first Assassin's Creed game to come out more than a, a year after its predecessor, since Assassin's Creed was announced to become a yearly game series since the release of Assassin's Creed 4. Or more importantly, this is the Assassin's Creed game that everybody hopes will end the Assassin's Creed game's curse and allow it to finally be a good game again. Speaking of Assassin's Creed 4, now I feel obligated to go back and play it along with the other two poorly received sequels just to catch up. And also the addition of a more RPG element to this new Assassin's Creed game sounds like an amazing idea. Uh, being able to level up and fighting uh, NPCs with different uh, levels and things like that. It definitely adds a lot more diversity to the game and makes it a, a lot more of a challenge because the other Assassin's Creed games were never really a difficult feat. And I'm sure there's a lot of other and I'm sure there's a lot of other things we haven't been told or shown yet. But so far, I feel like this is the kind of change that the series needed to get back on its feet all along. The Evil Within 2. I love the first Evil Within so much. I loved everything about it, honestly. From the twisted and convoluted story to its Resident Evil 4-esque survival horror gameplay style. It was an amazing game and I cannot wait for part 2. The trailer for it was amazing and October honestly couldn't come any sooner. Wolfenstein 2. Now I'm going to be honest, I haven't exactly played a Wolfenstein game. Though I'm actually really interested in Old Blood and A New Order, but I never got around to picking them up. But, because there is some time before this game launches, which is also in October, I'll try my very best to play through the previous game so that I'm all up to date on Wolfenstein. Beyond Good and Evil 2. Again, never played the original, but I heard this game was a prequel. So, I, you know, so it works in my favor. <laughs> Please don't hate me. It looks fun, and I cannot wait for this game to launch. 
Seriously, a monkey who says the F word like 20 times is in the video. Like, who, who wouldn't love that Ah, life is strange. Calm before the storm. I never actually played this game, but I watched my fiance play through it. Not because I didn't want to, but because I bought it for her, and of course, it's more like we play together because, you know, it's more of an interactive experience. And, you know, I kind of helped her make choices, we work together and all that stuff. But this game is amazing. Well, you know, the original one is amazing. And I'm not gonna lie, I am not ashamed to say it. That finale had me bawling my fucking eyes out. Either way, can't wait to play through Chloe's side of the story and lay the original game's unanswered secrets to rest. God of War. I loved the entire series, though I never really could finish Ascension, nor do I need to, and I also didn't play the second PSP title, but nonetheless, these games tell a fantastic story. Very gory, but fantastic, and the gameplay is always fun. I honestly feel like this game made hack and slash fused with button mashing an art. Seriously. If you played through all these games, you would know what I'm talking about. And I cannot wait to be able to continue Kratos' epic adventure. Hopefully, and I'm pretty sure this is a sequel. Hopefully I'm right. I mean, even if I'm not, I'm still going to enjoy it. But that, it'd be great to know what the hell happened after the third one. Days Gone. After watching the E3 gameplay, I am sold. This game looks fun, and the world reminds me a lot of The Walking Dead. And that isn't a bad thing. Though of course there's no walkers here, just straight sprinters, like Jesus Christ. And the use of zombie animals as an enemy is really cool, and I would love to see more of this game. And the gameplay demo showed some of the ways that you can actually play through the game. So it's very sandboxy, and I really like that. But again, I just really want to see more. Ah, Spider-Man. I swear there hasn't been a Spider-Man game that I can actually get into since like 2. 3 was meh. And I didn't play The Amazing Spider-Man either, but whatever. But I'm really happy with the approach the that Insomniac is taking with this game. It looks great, it looks like it feels great, and the combat looks fluid and fun, and it actually reminds me a lot of uh, Arkham, the Arkham Asylum games combat. Which is also a really great thing because those games are awesome. Hooray for actually good superhero games! Metro Exodus. I am currently on a playthrough of Metro 2033 and after I'll be playing Last Light, but this game looks phenomenal. The, the next gen graphics really make the world of Metro shine in a whole new way. Also the gameplay seems much more fluid which is a plus, and the reveal in the trailer with the huge steam engine train just passing through has me excited for more info on this game's overall story. Shadow of the Colossus. This remake is something I'm definitely looking forward to because, again, I never got to play the original on PS2. But, I have heard a great deal about the game and how great it was. So, I'm excited to be able to play it looking as polished as ever. Though I really am thinking about playing the original first. Call of Duty World War 2 The multiplayer trailer and gameplay for Call of Duty World War 2 honestly look amazing. In my opinion. <laughs> I was on board since the campaign reveal. But it's good to see how Sledgehammer's return to Call of Duty's roots looks and feels like. Especially for gamers like me who have been disappointed by the last few games. And finally, Far Cry 5. The new addition to the Far Cry series for the first time takes place in the US. Which brought about a lot of controversy, but we're not getting into that. But I am excited to get my hands on this game. The freedom to tackle this game and its missions however you want is something that not many games get completely right, but this one seems to. Also, you can tackle this game with another player, which is really awesome. You know, co-op games, come on, co-op games for the win. And also, let's not forget the teammates that you can have and what they can do. You can call a strafe run onto a street where a bunch of cult followers are housed. Man, that's freaking awesome. And let's not forget about the dog, okay? Whenever a dog, no, whenever a game has a canine companion, you know it's gonna be good. Seriously. Think about it, how many games with a canine companion turned out great? That's right. All of them. <laughs> but seriously, the game looks amazing. I, I actually can't wait to get my hands on it and play it for myself. I pro Who knows, it might be one of those few games that I actually do like multiple playthroughs of. The only game thus far this year that I've actually done that with is Resident Evil 7. So who knows, maybe this will be another one of those games. I should be a, I should be a critic. 
If I played your game twice, you know you got it right. And those are the E3 announcements that I am most excited for. Do you agree? Disagree? Did you pick the same thing? Did you pick other things? Did you pick the same things with other things? Let me know in the comments down below, you know? Maybe we can talk about it. I know I didn't cover every game. I just picked the ones that I was most excited for. The ones that stuck out the most to me. Uh, though, sadly enough, a lot of those games I haven't even played, like the prequels and stuff like that too. Far Cry included. I will be. I will hopefully be playing Far Cry 4, you know, just to get a taste of it. But yeah, uh, again, let me know in the comments what you think. And please, don't forget to like if you like, subscribe for more, please want more, why not have more? And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, until next time, stay sane.